first of all, what is Web3? So I'm not sure if some of you have seen this slide before, but the idea is that Web1 was really about the read, um, about reading the internet. So this was the information economy and it was about engaging in an informational manner. So you would read something off the internet. It was really just for informational purposes. And then um, you wouldn't necessarily interact or engage with it. And then we move on to Web2, which is really about the platform economy. So these are platforms like YouTube, um, Facebook, Instagram, Airbnb, Uber, and really allows you to engage. And a lot of these have formed marketplaces so that they connect two sides um, for both the supply and the demand side. And then finally, now we're going into Web3, which is about really um, is an answer to some of the problems that came out of Web2 with some of the the centralized entities and the big tech players who are owning and and um, getting a lot of that value. Web3 is really answering and trying to solve for those problems, trying to create a more equitable um, distribution of that value. So the idea is that everybody who contributes value to Web3 then becomes an owner in Web3. And so that's why we call it the ownership economy. And how that relates to travel specifically is that in Web1 travel, you had directories. So if you wanted to travel and go find a place, you would go to a website and it was really just a directory for you to find different things, more for informational and research purposes, but you couldn't actually do anything with it. And now we're in Web2, which is online booking. So whether you go to Expedia, um, booking.com, Airbnb, et cetera, you can actually book um, on that platform itself. And then with Web3, which is the era that we're going into now, it's about removing some of those intermediaries and trying to give the people who contribute value to that ecosystem the value that they create from it. So I just wanted to share um, some examples. I pulled this from the Wayback Machine, which is pretty fun. So as you can see, this was from about 1999. It really is uh, circa 1999. So you have a lot of information on this page. It's really not optimized for a user experience. It's not super readable. And um, it's, it's just a lot of information. But the purpose really here is for people to do research and to find different things. And so on the next slide, this is the listings page. I thought this was really interesting. Um, you have all the information, it has the prices. So not really, um, it's not updatable, it's, it's very static. And then finally, if you actually wanna book something, you actually have to call the owner. So you can't do anything online. And uh, for some of the marketers out in the audience, I thought this was really funny. So there's a line here that says, tell them I saw your ad number 1509 on vacation rentals by owner. I think we are definitely very, very spoiled today with all of the data that we get. And so we can track every click, have a lot of data just at our fingertips as to what is working and what's not. But then back then you actually had to um, tell people to quote something so that you knew if, if it was working or not. So I, I just thought that was, uh, just shows you how far we've come along and how lucky we are today to live in this data economy. And then this is VRBO today. So obviously uh, really, really nice experience, very easy to use. Um, you can actually interact with it. So this is the web two version. And then this is a listing page. So again, there's a lot, the user experience is a lot nicer. And then you can actually book directly through here so that it's not just about information. It's about actually engaging with that information, engaging with the people on the other side. 